This is Auburn Football Every Day, driven by Toyota. Welcome into Auburn Football Every Day, driven by Toyota. I'm Andy Bertram. On today's show, a look back at Auburn's homecoming win against Samford. You'll get to meet Auburn defensive end Elijah McAllister working on his Ph.D. at Auburn. Jason Campbell goes into the film room with Carnell Williams and a preview of the SEC opener at Texas A&M. But first, let's go into the locker room after Auburn's win against Sanford. Congratulations, 3-0, baby. Listen, we didn't have a great week. We were very lethargic on Tuesday and Wednesday. Can't afford that next week. we got to get a great plan together on Sunday, and we'll present it to you on Monday. It gets real now, man. Let's go compete in the Southeastern Conference. That's why you came here. That's why you came here. So, congratulations. You're 2-0 at Jordan-Hare. 2-0 at Jordan-Hare. You got to be. You got to defend our home. You got to defend our home. So, here we go, Luke. Get us started, baby. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. War Eagle, fly on the field. Never heard of conquer, never heard of you. War Eagle, feel that's the truth. Fly on the field. Go, go, go. War Eagle, fly on the field. Give me that, give me that. War Eagle, went for Auburn Power, Big Sea Land. Hey! I'm just doing my job, man. Uh, I've been in the shell since I've been here. I feel like I'm just you know, coming out of my shell that I've been in and actually doing what I'm supposed to been doing. Really just go out there and just take advantage of every opportunity thrown my way. You know what I mean? Just going out there with my brothers each and every day. We put in the work, so when it comes to game time, it's just normal. Yeah, you know, we came out, got some uh, some quick throws going. Guys made good catches and got off field with it, so uh, we kind of got in the groove, and then that opened up some of the shots down the field. Uh, you know, those guys went and made big plays down the field. That was great to see. And uh, the offensive line did a great job protecting me today. I felt like you know, I didn't feel like I really had much pressure all day, so that was awesome. And um, defense played great as well. You know, you know how it is, man. First night game, we got the fireworks going. We got the light show. You get the real experience of Jordan here at nighttime, man. Um, but it was wonderful. The fans came and showed out. It was a surreal feeling just seeing all the fans, the lights, the different, just everything really. It was just growing up as a kid, just dreaming to play in a big stadium like that. So, I mean, it was just a so it's a real moment for me. Uh, it was awesome. Our fans are awesome. A uh, ton of fun to be out there in front of all of them. Uh, shout out to all of them for, for coming and making the trip out here. And, uh, you know, it was fun to be under the lights and, and see that little light show going to the fourth quarter and everything. So that was great. Auburn football every day is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Tiger Talk, the official radio show of the Auburn Tigers. Tune in Thursdays at 6 p.m. Central on your local Auburn Sports Network affiliate. Welcome back on Auburn Football Every Day, driven by Toyota. Let's take a look at Auburn's win against Sanford. The highlights are presented by Truckworks. DJ Rias and Brendan Jenkins back to take this kickoff from McPherson. It is deep, it is a fair catch. It goes five yards deep in the end zone from the right hash. Play action, Thorne looks up the sideline, down the sideline, Fair's got it! At the 35 yard line and down at the 30. Jarquez Hunter remains the tailback for Auburn. Play action, Thorne with a pump fake, throws it up the sideline, wide open, touchdown Hollywood Hopes! Play action to Stanton, hires to throw, pressured, throws it up the boundary, and it's intercepted! Intercepted on the play. Great job by J.D. Rim right there, getting his head around, intercepting that pass. Play action, Hires drops to throw. With pressure, he throws it, pass. It's picked off Jalen Simpson, his third pick in his many games. And out of bounds at the Sanford 21. Hunter flanks Thorne. From the gun, Thorne will throw. Looks up the middle, Thorne's gonna run it. He's at the two, he's in! Peyton Thorn for the touchdown run for Auburn. Clock is rolling, 137. First and 10 for Auburn at the Sanford 44. Play action, Thorn looks up the seam to the end zone, and it is caught at the five yard line. Gravaldo Fairweather. Second and goal from the one. Ashford will just take it in unfettered. Leaps over the goal line into the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn. Robbie Ashford's fourth touchdown run of the year. Thorne 
Will take it himself around the right side, 35-30. He's to the 20, he's to the 10, he's to the five. He dives to the pylon. First and goal from the half yard line. It is a handoff, Jarquez Hunter dives into the end zone. That's a touchdown for Auburn. Jarquez Hunter's first touchdown of the season. Here's third and 15. Thorne to throw. Flushed out of the pocket. He's to the 30. Spins. He's close to the first down. I think he has it. He needed 15 yards. I think he got 15 and a quarter. With Alston. Hands the ball. No, it's Thorne. Right up the middle. Thorne to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Peyton Thorne. The snap to Ashford. Play action. Robbie looks. He's got a man wide open. Micah Riley touchdown. Right up the seam. First touchdown for Mike O'Reilly. First catch for Mike O'Reilly. Crittenden drops to throw. He's pressured. Crittenden's going down back at the 25. Cam Riley coming in off the edge. And Ashford takes one final knee, and that will be the final play of the day. The two head coaches, Q Freeze and Chris Hatcher, will meet at midfield. And the Tigers will come away on homecoming night with a 45-13 win. Championship Moments. Celebrating Auburn's 1983, 93, and 2013 football teams is presented by Yellowwood Brand Pressure Treated Pine. If it doesn't have that yellow tag, you don't want it. In a top 20 showdown at Jordan-Hare Stadium, Auburn hosted the Florida State Seminoles. Trailing 24 to 20 with 6.35 remaining in the fourth quarter, the Tigers started their do or die drive. And a floater over the middle of the line of James at the 10 and a foot race at the 5. James is in for the touchdown, Auburn! Auburn converted twice on fourth down to take the 27 to 24 lead. From the 26, Lowry throwing. It is intercepted! Intercepted by Greg Carr! Greg Carr's interception ended the Florida State threat, and the Tigers came away with the win. Welcome back on Auburn Football Every Day, driven by Toyota. Elijah McAllister transferred to Auburn from Vanderbilt, Tiger defensive end. He's working on his PhD at Auburn and has his own foundation. Let's get to know Elijah McAllister. More of this content coming to War Eagle Plus. By taking pride in what he represents, senior transfer Elijah McAllister has earned the role of captain from his teammates after only a few short months on campus. Uh, what up, baby? Right, <laughs> Thank you, brother. Now you can get a brick by me. <laughs> I was about to say, I know how, I know how special that brick is, man. One fast, fly to the ball, let's go do it, starting to be going right. <laughs> Keys is to getting off the ball first. Striking with my hand. Second, violent. And then getting extension. Using my long arms for my advantage. Ooh, Hancho, keep your feet active though. <laughs> What do you say? Are you through being the Oh, yeah, no, I'm good, I'm good. I'm ready. I'm ready. Cool. <laughs> Earning two degrees from Vanderbilt University, McAllister is now pursuing a PhD in education and psychology on the Plains. I honestly just want to be able to utilize the program that I am now to impact uh, people in a positive way and different lives that I come in connection with. The program's been amazing. I'm able to actually take the things I'm learning in class into practice in my everyday life. So in the locker room, on the field, and just kind of, you know, make the world a better place. He's a young man of tremendous character. I think just every way he conducts his business in the classroom, off the field, just a tremendous individual, you know, and I think all, I think it's very easy for his teammates to recognize that, see that, and go ahead and see how he goes about his business. And, you know, he epitomizes really of what you want of an Auburn football player. I love the game of football because I grew up playing this game from six years old. It's a kid's game, and it's something that, you know, people don't realize that can take you further than you ever imagined. And this game has not only allowed me to have a ton of fun, build a ton of bonds, and 
like make friends forever and make plays on the field, but also that allowed me to attend a university like Auburn and get a degree like this for free, which my family doesn't come from much. We wouldn't be able to do this. And I don't know if anybody in my family has ever paid for college. It's either been sports or just didn't go. And he goes down. Good initial rush for the Tigers up front. Elijah McAllister yes, transfer from Vanderbilt getting in there on that tackle right there. Donning the Auburn uniform proudly, McAllister has made a difference early, but his impact is being felt off the field as well. I have my own foundation, my own nonprofit organization, so I do enjoy giving back to the community. It's titled the All for One, One for All Foundation, so that's something I do in my free time. The two pillars are education and experience. Obviously, you know, education is important to me. Um, I'm currently pursuing my PhD, and experience is also important because this game has brought me to the state of Alabama, a kid from New Jersey. I've never thought I'd be here. So those are two pillars, and I just want to be able to help underserved youth all across America and in the communities that I keep uh, make the world a better place. Auburn Football Every Day is brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama. We cover what matters. And by War Eagle Plus, coming this fall. Welcome back on Auburn Football Every Day. I'm Andy Bertram. Jason Campbell now goes into the film room with his teammate and Auburn associate head coach and running backs coach, Carnell Williams. We're here with one of the greatest running backs of all time in Auburn history. You know, I don't want to build his head up too much, but, uh, you know, he's one of the top recruits to come through Auburn. Uh, you know, this guy ran with his heart on his sleeve, a lot of emotions, a lot of hard effort. Uh, as you're going to see in this film, you know, like we call this the film room. And what we're trying to do is, you know, show the Auburn family some of the great plays, highlights of guys that's come before, but also teach them about the game of football. You know, it's a totally different when you're in the stands, you're watching, all they can see is a guy scoring a touchdown running across the line. But what you don't see is some of the ins and outs of how you got to that situation and how you got to that play. So. You know, we're going to roll this first one. You know, this is your first touchdown as an Auburn Tiger. Really? You know, oh. in, uh, in the Vanderbilt game up in Nashville. Right here, we have two tight end set. You know, we got TC card up here. So it's 2001. This is 22 years ago. You know, in the RPO system nowadays, this guy 10, 10 yards off. We just throw the ball out there. That's but right. back in the day, we was in two tight end set. If the we it was a box count. So here you got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven man box. But since we're a two tight end set, we still can run the ball. So our goal was to run away from the loaded side. This is the loaded side. Right. So over here, we have numbers. We got three for three, and then we got a center that can come up. So actually we got four guys. Only thing that can stop this for this guy was to come down. But when we get a ball to a running back, your job is to make what? One guy miss. Yes, sir. Right here, this is what you have to show your guys. This is what the coach did. So we actually missed the block here, That's the right. linebacker. We don't even block the mic here. Our center is supposed to hit the hit the hit the right defender, then work his way up to the linebacker. But he does, he's not able to get the second level. You make a guy miss here, and then the rest is just speed. To me, you know, I I, I kind of always pride myself for. Uh, never um, having that first guy uh, make that tackle. Um, so um, to me, I always like to preach in my room, man, uh, the really, really good bats, man, uh, can make guys up front um, that much better. And I and I really feel like by your, uh, your effort, your tenacity uh, that you play with, man, uh, it can uh, help those guys uh, up front. So, uh, yeah, just – Made a guy miss uh, that Mike backer there. And then uh, whenever you get one-on-ones uh, with that safety, man, as a running back, that's your job, man. Uh, you know, if if you can't make that guy miss, then um, running is probably coming in the ball game. <laughs> all right, all right, Jason. Go crazy. Jason. You have your freshman year, 
You got hurt early in Alabama, Alabama game. Yes, sir. You being from Alabama, knowing how big the Iron Bowl is, you've been hearing about it ever since you probably was a kid. That's right. And then your sophomore year, you end up missing that game as well. That's right. Uh, when we were down in Tuscaloosa. So this is your first real action. That's right. In the Iron Bowl. And it's your junior year. You know, first play go 80 yards. Now, this is the play I want the fans to know that. Watching number 81 and running down the side. Like, <laughs> we always talk about who's the fastest and all of that. Jerry McIntyre might have something to say on this play. Well. The late draw play here. It's a dead. I mean, look, I mean, look, first of all, continue. If you got to see, look at my fullback. Look at the offensive line. Look at the receivers blocking downfield, gets on the second level. I mean, I run through a hole, and then it goes back to if for offensive coordinator get a back on safety, man, you got to make guys miss and run through tackles. And then now it's just me take, taking it the distance there. And uh, this guy, Jerry's McIntyre, and that guy, he is um, – he, he's catching me there, guys. I never – I never have been the one to say I just got long speed, man. I'm I'm a guy that got a really good burst for 30, 40, 50 yards. You know, when I start going 80 plus yards now, uh, you make it come, you make it out, Rummy Jason. But why he almost tapped you at the end of this play, though? That's what I'm saying. I always tell uh, Jerry's that now, after two two decades later, I said, bro, imagine if you would have pushed me out of bounds, man, like. It wouldn't have been go crazy. It wouldn't have been an eighty yard run. Like so uh Jared almost um stole my shine there, but thank God he didn't. But man, what a moment that was, uh Jason. Then you talked about Jason. I grew up all my life wanting to play in the Iron Bowl. And like you say, my freshman year played six snaps, got hurt, sophomore year, did not play it at all. And then got an opportunity my junior year to play for it, to open it up and go 80 yards, man, was uh, nothing like it there. War Eagle Plus. It's your team on your time. War Eagle Plus takes you inside the plains with premium content you'll find nowhere else. Do this for Auburn! In-depth features, interviews, and the stories of Auburn women and men as they fly down the field. Auburn wins! and soar on to victory. Coming soon, more of your Auburn Tigers with War Eagle Plus. Welcome back on Auburn Football Every Day, driven by Toyota. Next up, the SEC opener at Texas A&M. Let's get a preview of Auburn's trip to College Station. Oh, excited to be 3-0, and another great crowd at Jordan-Hare, and uh, thankful for our great fans, students, band, cheerleaders. Um, just um, continue to be amazed by the support that you receive here at this place and um, excited about any time we get to play at home. And obviously, uh, we've got to go on the road this week, but um, thrilled to be at 3-0. and There was uh, some good things and then some things we've got to improve on for sure. Um, we um, played a lot of kids, which was good, um, but a lot of young kids tend to make mistakes, and we, we had quite a few of those also, and uh, we've got to continue to work on not turning the ball over, particularly in the red zone, and um, that was really out of our possessions. We had offensively outside the uh, two turnovers. We were pretty efficient offensively. Um, defensively, I thought we were solid. Uh, particularly with the older guys, um, and there was a lot thrown at them. They had a good plan to try to stay close and shorten the game, and uh, thought our older guys did fairly well with it. Um, but younger guys made some a lot of mistakes, truthfully, and we've got to bring them along because we're going to need them as the season progresses. Uh, but excited to be 3-0 and and head into conference play. Um, I mean, honestly, we're always, you know, trying to put our – best foot forward but you know SEC plays different you know it's it's a grind every week and you know if you're not ready to put your best foot forward then it can go bad really quick and I think that we're excited for SEC play you know we're I think 3-0 and since the first time I've been here I think the first time being 3-0 and so you know a lot of guys are excited and uh, we're ready for SEC play I think that you know we've been progressively getting better every week and uh yeah, I think I think we're all excited that we're finally starting the real thing. So, 
I love, I can't wait. I, I love SEC play, man, because you play against real guys. You play against real NFL guys every week. Um, that's my favorite part about it. I like the competition part aspect of it, you know, and what we got next week, we got a good receiving core. I can't wait. I'm, I'm just ready for it. I'm ready for us to lock in. I love early kicks on the road. Uh, I think our kids will. I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's a huge challenge, truthfully. It's the same time zone. We'll, we'll uh, put them to bed a little earlier, um, eat a little earlier. But we did that all fall camp. You know, we started early. Uh, so it's truthfully will be just like a fall camp day. So I, I don't think there's a huge adjustment to that at all. And I, I, I like the early kicks. Auburn and Texas A&M meet Saturday morning at 11 o'clock at Kyle Field in College Station. Our pregame coverage on the Auburn Sports Network begins at 8 a.m. We'll see you next week on Auburn Football Every Day, driven by Toyota.